Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to another inconsistent bookworm and I bet you're wondering, hey, how am I actually getting these out instead of it being random, whatever the hell. Uh, I've injured myself, I believe, at my work, so I had to take off a little bit. We'll see. I'm going to see the doctor here in a few days. Time of this recording, it's technically Thursday. It'll be next Tuesday. <laughs> but hey, that's just personal stuff, and hopefully I'll be fine. If not, uh, wheelchairs, everything. <laughs> but hey, I want to actually talk with y'all about manga. And I figured, I know my f original review of Bleach was a little apathetic, so I want to go ahead and get into the second volume here. <laughs> yeah, I went ahead and got volume two of Bleach here. And I want to get into this quickly because I know that I was, like I said, I was very eh, on the first volume. I thought the first chapter was really lackluster. Uh, the, se the last chapter was really bleh. And just like, okay, well now we're going to do the cliched. We got to end it on a cliffhanger thing like all things do. But I was like, all right, the beginning or the middle parts were actually really interesting whenever they went more into not simply just the Soul Society, but also about Reapers and Hollows and how they all work together. And I thought that was cool. I thought that was a great premise. I thought that Rukio, she was an interesting, at least enough character. Ichigo is still a little, I was like, eh, on. So I was like, all right, let's see how this next chapter or next volume does and how well does it handle things does this progress a story in any meaningful way and I have to say yeah I think so this is not a perfect volume by any stretch of the imagination I'm not as enamored with it or at least in terms of the manga itself. I'm not as enamored as many other people are with Bleach, but I thought this was much more superior than the first volume was. Uh, it's not as much love as I had, like with Assassination Classroom, that I thought was so much better than the first volume. You know, I thought the first volume was pretty damn good. Um, here, the real, like, progressions of everything in terms of a story is the ending of the entire the first, or what we were seeing at the end of the first volume, I want to say his name was Chad, uh, this long-haired gentleman here. We get to see more of him trying to, yeah, it is Chad. Huh, I was actually right up. I was like, I swear his name is Chad, but it seems like too weird, too normal of a name to us dumb Americans. But we get to see the resolution to that little bit of a story thing, and they it seems like they're trying to inter or say that he might be a bigger character later on. If I'm not mistaken, he does become a bigger character later on in the series. Eh, I don't know. Chad's kind of just there. He's just a, he's noble, but he's just a guy. I mean, there's nothing else I could say about Chad. But I do like that there is some damn good fighting here. I actually like that Ichigo really showing off trying to be a bit of a badass. In a good way. It's not too much of like show off, show off. But just, you know, he's being cool. He's fighting against a hollow who is a little bit... It's a monster of the week kind of thing. Uh, many people describe it that way. I don't disagree. It's pretty much like, ah, he's fighting the... Power Ranger monster that happens to have this one power that makes him really powerful or something. It would be nice if they maybe kind of, if it eventually tries to explain, well, why are these hollows able to have these powers? Because if not, then it's honestly, Jesus, it sounds better to just be an evil person because you get weird powers when you die. But that storyline, it actually, like I said, it helped that I think that Chad was given something to do other than just brood. Although, always the fact that he's able to talk with a parakeet is weird. And in fact, they constantly keep having it happening. And I'm like, parakeets aren't known for really talking. <laughs> it's just not really their thing. But, well, this. 
the writer can make his own little twists on different things, I guess. But the last half of the book, I'd say, because first chapter or two deals with the resolution of the Chad arc, it all has to deal with the introduction of what is called a mod. It is pretty much a Pez that Ichigo is able to take to where he's able to leave his body behind and take on his Soul Reaper form. Which, they talk about this mod thing because supposedly it was created by Soul Reapers so that way they could change or they could put powerful... It's weird how they describe Pretty much it's putting a created soul into a body that's able to be strong and it's able to do different things. I don't know why. <laughs> Especially considering what we do know of the Soul Society so far, especially dealing with the Soul Reapers, is that, yes, they probably do have a body, per se, but this addition wouldn't have helped them that much. And to be fair, like, they even said, it's like, well, some of them were bad, and some, you know, tried to take control. It's like... Yeah, it's a soul. What do you expect to happen there? It's one of the things I think is going to... Because I do know a little bit about this series that eventually Ichigo kind of runs afoul of the Soul Society in a way. And of course him and Rukia have to team up together because Rukia also tends to turn against it. So it is nice that it's starting to set up this premise that the Soul Society, they don't always double check things or even think things through a hundred percent now this mod it is an interesting idea i just don't <laughs> the story seems to be at odds with itself at times there is some good writing near the end just there's one moment that really baffles me because obviously ichigo puts in this thing and the thing takes over his body so i can go throughout his life, or go ahead and go do what he needs to do while he goes and takes care of the reaping. Now, the reason why that's weird is because, of course, the mod has superpowers. They're able to jump really far and be really strong. Whatever, I don't care that much. But what is weird about it is immediately he happens upon, or... or uh, Orahome, I can't pronounce the name correctly. I'm sorry, if I'm probably butchering her name. Orahome, I, her name begins with no, and R, and there's an R, I, and there's no, and that's where it's H O M E at the end. And I'm like, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm stupid. And he doesn't assault her, but he does. He kisses her, and it's like, it seems really odd, like she really doesn't really. She's not into him that way, and even there's another girl who is into her and is mad that he did this. And it's a bit objective. <laughs> it's like objectifying her. It's like, all right, thanks. She can't just be a character. Everybody's just objectifying, including other women. Cool. <laughs> but then later on, we learn that this mod that is within him actually does not want to kill. Doesn't even want to kill Hollows, even though it's fighting against this one that's about to kill these kids. That it already was a bit. The mod was a jackass too. <sighs> there is supposed to be a thing about the fact it doesn't. It swore off killing completely. <sighs> I don't get it. It's it's not that it's a bad idea. There There is a lot of unique ideas I could go with. And in fact, by the end of it all, Rukia decides that the gentleman who she bought this stuff from, who he shouldn't have given her this particular batch, who he originally, he's supposed to be some kind of a jackass that I think he was named, but I don't remember them stating it, but I think they keep calling him Mr. Kirk, okay, I can't remember, and I'm not going to sit here and bore y'all while I try to find it. But she pretty much keeps him from taking it because she wants to try and protect his soul because she realizes he's, you know, 
the mod is not a terrible thing. He just, you know, he has his own life he wants to live and all that. So, like I said, that's not the bad part. The bad part is just the whole, oh, I don't want to kill or anything like that. Okay, yeah, you may not want to kill because he, you know, wants to... He believes that every life is sacred. Okay, cool, that's fine. But why still be a dick? And that's the part that I think is where I think the story was at odds. Like, most people know about the Akira Toriyama, the pretty much chapter-by-chapter chapter writing that would happen when it came to the Android Saga, which eventually transitioned to the Cell Saga about the fact that his editor was like, well, why have these be our big bats? Well, why is it now a bunch of kids? Why is it an ugly dude? Why is it an uglier dude? There, that's perfect, you know? <sighs> you know, it feels like it's almost written chapter by chapter, but it's almost to the point where sometimes I do wonder if the writers are not always double-checking what they are writing compared to what they just wrote. And I understand you know, the entire shonen way of how they put out mangas is hell, to put it lightly. And I totally get that, but it's one of those, like, literally, this was two chapters ago. You wrote this a few weeks ago, and you couldn't remember it? I mean, I remember dumb shit I've written years ago. Sure, I don't write every week, but I do tr remember certain stuff. Hell, I put it out every... At something every week, so I wait, y'all have something to see. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's not terrible. It's just, it's a weird writing flub, and it kind of flies in the face of what is the purpose of this mod, and like, how, where is its moral gr line actually drawn? You know, forcing themselves almost on another person, and also being a dick to a bunch of kids. Ah, that's okay. Killing, eh, 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 that's evil. Even to ants, which I'm not even joking, like he saved this hollow's head from falling onto a bunch of ants. Uh, but besides all that, this is not actually too bad. This is actually, I think, a step up from what originally transpired in the first volume. I think there was better interaction with Ichigo and Rukia. I thought Rukia got even more character development, which was a good thing to see. I do like there was a lot less emphasis on Ichigo's family, which I'm just honest, I don't care that much about. I may sympathize with some of their plights, but I don't give a shit about his deranged father who wants to keep Ichigo on his toes by attacking him and stuff. What? There's weird trappings that this kind of leans into the manga anime verse that just it lives in that I think that the writer could have avoided. And I get the writer was whenever he originally created this, he was a younger guy at the time, but still, it's one that's like I would have figured this would have stayed away from some of the uh, even at the time bigger trappings because this happened in the early 2000s. So Volume 2, I actually was fairly surprised. Leaning, looking back on it now, I'm not as enamored as I was whenever I first finished it, but I'm still fairly jazzed about it. More than enough to go into Volume 3 and be hopeful. Unlike with, at the end of Volume 1, where I'm like, oh, oh, the first few chapters, or the middle chapters were trying to give me hope, and that one kind of started to dash it. <laughs> Here, I'm looking forward to it. I hope that there is actually more forward character movement. I believe so because I do... I have it actually sitting and I'm looking over here at it. I do know that we're going to get more into Karin. I think is how her name is pronounced. K-A-R-R-I-N, -R -R I think. It's not K-A-R-I-N, but still, it's not Karen. That's Karin. Might be Karen. I'm dumb. I keep telling y'all this. But it does look like we're going to get a little bit of Ichigo's family, but more importantly, it's going to be probably the most likable out of them. Next to possibly Ichigo himself. And that is my biggest problem I'm still having. It's like, Ichigo is just, he's just a, 
he's you haka shows how many people have described it's like yeah he very much is he's a lovable but gruff kind of guy that's the biggest thing i can say about him it's not bad in fact i think it's getting better i just think it's not taking baby steps but it's taking toddler steps it's like all right let's speed this up a little bit let's get some not just cool action but let's also get some cool character bits because that's what i think the series is really still lacking in rukio does have some but it still feels almost uh expository to the point where it's like all right I this. just let the characters be you shouldn't have to sit there and exposit all this bullshit it's like oh, okay i don't care <laughs> so hey i i'm pleasantly surprised by volume two i was kind of dreading it but i found myself enjoying it for the most part just by leaning looking back on it and certain things going wait that doesn't make as much sense as it should <laughs> so hey if you liked volume two or you wanted to rail against her whatever you need to put your comments below and let me know how you felt about it but hey we'll see how volume three ends up taking us and till then y'all see y'all there so bye bye everybody